Nintendo is a Japanese multinational consumer electronics video game company headquartered in Kyoto, Japan. Nintendo has produced one of the most successful consoles in video game history. But during the early years of the 1980s and early 90s, Nintendo has hit a few blunders on the way. The first major blunder was releasing the SNES in 1991. By then, Sega Genesis has already been in the market for about two years and has already gained an audience. If Nintendo would have released the SNES earlier, then Sega Genesis probably wouldn't have survived in the market for that long. And now the next roadblock that Nintendo would have to face in 1992 would be the Sony PlayStation. While Nintendo and Sega Genesis are going after each other to see who has the better console, a new piece of technology is on the rise, the CD-ROM. A CD-ROM stands for Compact Disc Read-Only Memory. Having a game system to use CD-ROM technology was going to be a game changer. CD-ROMs were cheaper to make than an SNES cartridge, stores 300 times more information than a cartridge, thus allowing much more sophisticated graphics. Nintendo was already in a tough position. They had no experience with CD-ROMs, so their solution was to make plans with Sony Corporation to make the new system. But there was one problem. Sony has already announced plans to introduce its own game system, the PlayStation. And Nintendo executives were worried about revealing Nintendo's technological secrets to a competitor as large and powerful as Sony. So what did Nintendo do? For some reason, Nintendo waited until the day after Sony announced the partnership. Then they made an announcement of their own. They were ditching Sony and partnering with the Dutch electronics giant Philips. Even though Nintendo lost a little bit of ground to the Sega Genesis in the US market, Nintendo was still the world leader in video game sales in the early 1990s. Many Sony executives were hesitant to challenge Nintendo's dominance. There was a group talks and discussions about not releasing the PlayStation at all in fear of getting wiped out by Nintendo, thus hurting Sony's company name in the process. At the time, the CEO of Sony, Norio Oga, didn't want to be humiliated by Nintendo. He was persistent in having the company continue working on the PlayStation until it was perfect. The Sony PlayStation was introduced in Japan on December 3rd of 1994, and then in the United States September 9th, 1995. Nintendo eventually scrapped its CD-ROM based system and introduced the Nintendo 64, yet another cartridge game system. The release of Nintendo 64 had a blunder of problems. It had poor sound, poor graphics, and poor sales compared to the PlayStation. But Nintendo did really well with a wide variety of games that got released on the system. For example, Mario 64, Mario Kart 64, Ocarina of Time, GoldenEye 007, Super Smash Bros, just to name a few. The Nintendo 64 also has a game port that allows up to four players to play a four player game. Sony PlayStation only had two. The N64 also introduced the Rumble Pack controller in 1997. The Rumble Pack provided players with forced feedback while playing games. So the N64 did have a lot of pros and cons, but ultimately the PlayStation was able to surge past both Nintendo and Sega, thus making the PlayStation the industry leader throughout the 90s. Sega panicked and spread their resources over too many game systems at once like the Sega Saturn and the Dreamcast. But Sega was still in third place, and in January of 2001, Sega decided to get out of the hardware business altogether and only focus on game software. To this day, that decision Nintendo made in 1992 to stick with cartridges continues to haunt them to this very day. When Sony introduced the PlayStation 2 in 2000, they were careful to make it backward compatible so that virtually all 800 plus PlayStation 1 games could be played on the new station. An extra bonus, because the PlayStation 2 now uses a DVD player, DVD stands for Digital Versatile Disc, instead of a CD-ROM player, you can watch your favorite movies on there like 2019 Musical Cats or the Emoji Movie, just to name a few. A year later, Nintendo introduced the GameCube. For that console, it introduces a mini DVD-ROM system that does not play movies and isn't compatible with N64 game cartridges. The N64 owners were a little mad and disappointed that their old games couldn't be played on the GameCube. What do you guys think? Should Nintendo make plans with Sony sooner 
Or do you think that Nintendo should have taken more time to develop a console that supported CD-ROMs? If I missed any key information, let me know in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching.